Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Welcome back to another video. I had a request earlier this year to make a video to show how to pack and ship art prints. And so I'm gonna go through this step by step with you now. This is very similar to the sandwiching technique that I've shown in other videos in terms of how to pack up comic books, magazines, model planes. You're just doing the same thing on a bigger scale. And so this is an example of what I'm talking about right here. This is an art print. I already have it wrapped up in the bubble wrap. Now you can see here, this one already comes with some uh, boarding on it right here uh, because it's a sealed art print of Cavewoman. Cavewoman, by the way, my absolute favorite in terms of the female comic characters. She's great. Uh, so she's popular, she sells very well. If you could find her comic books or if you could find anything with Cavewoman on it, that's a little be on the lookout tip for you here. Pick it up because she sells very well. So uh, this one sold for 30 bucks and uh, I got it for less than a dollar at an estate sale hall where there was just a ton of comic art and other comic book related materials. And so I've just been selling off the art pieces just piece by piece. And we want to make sure this gets there to the person undamaged, not crushed, not wrinkled, nothing like that. So what you definitely want to do is you want to make sure you get the print. If it's not already sealed in sort of some type of plastic sleeve, you want to put some kind of plastic covering over it. Uh, that could be a large uh, a bag, a large kind of plastic bag that you put it in, or you could get um, a poly mailer and cut around it and just put it around this so that you just have some kind of protection over it. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you sandwich it between two very strong pieces of cardboard. And you could get these pieces of cardboard from slip sheets. I've done a video of this before, but if you go to Costco or BJ's or Sam's Club or whatever the name of the wholesale club area is in your city. If you go by the cardboard balers, they have these big sheets that they use to stack between the pallets. It protects what's underneath the pallet below. And you want to look for the ones that are nice and thick. You can see they have these multiple layers of corrugation to it. That's the ones you want because these are the ones that are not going to bend. They have real flimsy ones there too. You don't want those because that's not gonna offer sufficient protection to your print that you have below. And you could use this not only for prints, but you could use it for posters that came flat and they're already sealed within a board. I mean, you could do those as well uh, for, for, for this. So uh, this same technique will, you, will work for the posters and it will work for the art prints. Now, the reason why I use this kind of sandwiching technique is because when you start getting into posters that are this big, uh, you know, it gets really challenging to find a box that is that big just laying around. And if you have to purchase them, you know, custom size boxes for these types of prints that could get really expensive and boxes could get crushed too. So don't kid yourself, putting it just inside of a box isn't always sufficient. It's really the technique behind how it's actually protected is going to determine whether or not this is gonna get damaged or not. And I use this technique a lot and I haven't had any problems with any prints getting damaged. Now, don't get me wrong, you know, if you had an art print that was worth thousands of dollars, you know, maybe you wanna put some extra, extra layers of protection built into the system. But for your average, you know, print that you're selling, uh, this technique should be more than sufficient. So what you're gonna do is you're going to basically make sure you leave some margins, but you're gonna cut out uh, right around the uh, poster that you have or the print and you're going to leave a little bit of room because you don't want to you don't want to ship it with it going right up against the uh, the cardboard there because then what's going to happen if you have it like this is that the postal carrier or somewhere in the system is going to bang into it and it's going to damage it. So you want to make sure you have adequate margins around it. That's just what I'm talking about in terms of having proper technique, which will save your item from getting damaged. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is you also have to be careful in terms of what the slip sheet looks like, because if, for example, I'll show you right here, this is a piece of a slip sheet that I have uh, right over here that I want to grab for you. 
Uh, this was large, just like the one that you see here. But you see the problem with it is that it has a pretty significant seam right here that goes in like that. Now, technically, technically, if I wanted to, I could put this right here and it will fit. You see that? But I don't want to do that because what's going to happen when it ships is that that's going to fold in easily on itself. And I don't want that to happen. This needs to be sturdy all the way around for this technique to work properly. So I already cut one piece out of this uh, slip sheet and I'm going to show it to you in a moment. But before I do, this is just one other example of something you would not want to do. So you could see here, this folds down too easily in the other direction. And so even though it would fit here, that's still going to be a problem because this could fold in too easily on itself. So we don't want that. What we want is a piece that looks like this. You see, there's no significant seams running this way or running that way. And so this is going to be perfect for putting the print right in. And you can see here, this is exactly what you're looking for, like a half inch to inch margin all the way around it. That's going to give you nice protection right there all the way around. So then you're going to cut out another piece to put out right on top of it. And what I would suggest just in terms of saving time is you take your slip sheet right here and you just lay it out and you lay this right over it and you just cut right around here like this. I'm going to point the, uh, the camera down here so you could see what I'm talking about. So, you know, strategically, I put it right here on the corner because then all I have to do here is I just have to make two cuts. I have to make one cut running this way and I have to make one cut running down that way. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to make those cuts. There's a problem with being so tall. I have to bend down uh, sometimes when I do these videos. But anyway, so we're going to go like this. You don't need to see my head right now anyway. So I'm just going to cut in and just go all the way down. So I've got that done and now I'm going to come in and cut it this way. And once you get it started, you could just take this off because now all you have to do, hi again, all you have to do is you have to meet these seams right here. So I'm just going to cut in like this and just try to stay straight. And if you need to do a little bit of trimming afterwards just to get it fine tuned, you know, you could do that. So that should just cut out normally. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put this to the side. All right. So now we have two pieces that overlap pretty good, very quick, easy to do. And what we're going to do is we're going to take cave woman and we're going to make a cave woman sandwich. We're going to put her right inside here. Now I'm just going to do, this is just me. I'm just going to do a slight little trim right here. Cause just a little rough around the edges. I just want to make it a little smoother like that. So I'm just going to do a quick little, quick little trim right there. And that's just me and see right here. It's like a little, it's like jagged right here. I don't want that. It's probably not going to cause like any kind of big problem or anything, but I just like to have smooth edges. So I'm just going to trim that down a bit. Just make it nice and smooth. Okay. That will actually make it a little easier to close with the tape later on if it lines up properly. So, all right. So again, we're going to take cave woman. We're going to put her right inside here and that's it. All I did is I put her right inside like this. And now we're going to do the taping technique. Now this is very, very important how you do this technique because here's where we'd have a problem. Okay. If all I did was tape it down like this, like I'll show you here. If I just went like this, put a piece of tape over here and just went like that. This is not going to be sufficient if I just tried to send it out like this because it's still, this is not going to be an effective of enough barrier like this. And you know, it, when it's out there and it's getting, you know, you know, tossed through the mail system, this is going to get probably punctured or broken in some way. It's not effective enough as a barrier. It's too thin uh, being just tape. So what we have to do is we have to close this seam tightly and there's a technique to do it that I'm going to show you right now. 
All right, so what we're gonna do, you don't need to see my head for this. I'm going, you're gonna see my hands working. I'm going to just take a piece of tape out like this. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure that I've left myself a little bit of margin there, okay? And then I'm going to press down like this. So I'm gonna pinch it, okay? So it seems closed together and I'm gonna tightly pull it down, okay? So now, I am, see that? I'm tight, I've tightly pulled it down so we don't have this big seam right here. So now, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we're on the other side now, directly across, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna push down, Sometimes you have to hold it up like this to get a good pinch and squeeze, and then push it in. Just hold it real tight. Sometimes you gotta maneuver around a little bit. But then you just really use a lot of strength and you just seal that down like this. So now, the reason why I do this side and then this side is now I could work with it much easier. So simple, easy to do. And I'm gonna trim off a little bit of this margin here because there's a little bit of an overhang. And the reason we wanna trim that overhang off is because we need these two points to meet one another. So we can't have one overhanging the other. And I'm also gonna do the same thing, just trim the other side as well. There's not as much of an overhang here, but there's just a tiny bit, so I'm gonna trim that down. And you could also see that once I pinched that together, that led to a little bit of an overhang here too, so we wanna cut that down so we make sure that's nice and even. Okay, now one of the things that you could do, just a little technique, if you wanna move your print from one side to the other without having to undo all the tape, is you just do a little bit of a tap. Because you see right here, it's right up against here and I want it to go down a little bit more because I have a little bit more space here. Like you could see, I have more space there, more of a margin here than I do here. So I wanna distribute that a little bit better. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna tap it down a little bit like this. Sometimes you might need to give a little bit of a push inside with your fingers. But now, sometimes you gotta adjust a little bit. But now you're all set. You've got an even margin here. And you've got an even margin here. So just use that little tap technique and that'll help fix that problem. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here because that's gonna now make this, uh, the inner component here, the, the print or the poster, it's gonna be evenly distributed within the board. Then all we have to do is work on taping around it. All right, so again, we're gonna find the center and we're just gonna press down and we're gonna pinch it in together, just like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing. See that? See how that looks? Perfect. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. So on the other side now, push down right in the center. Make sure the two pieces are touching each other right like that. The two sides have to touch, stay down. There you go, you're set. Now don't worry if it's not 100%, 100% perfect, but as long as it's close down like that, you'll be fine. Okay, so just to recap where we're at right now, we've got a piece here, we've got a piece pinched down here, we've got a piece taped down right there, and we've got a piece of tape pinched down right here. So right in the center of all of the sides, we have got that tape down real tight so the cardboard is touching. So now we're gonna do the same thing to the corners. So, just gonna go right here 
You can pick any corner, doesn't matter. I'm gonna pinch it down, just like you see here. Put it in just like that. Then you go right here and you get this corner. Push that down, and once you get going, this starts going fast. Now I'm not gonna bore you by making you watch me tape the whole thing, but I'll show you as I get through certain steps of this. But this is what you're doing. So we're just gonna do the other three now. Okay, so now we have all of the corners done. They're taped down and pinched as well. Taped and pinched here on both sides of this corner, on both sides of this corner, on both sides of this corner, and both sides of this corner. And as you continue to do this, the package starts to feel stronger and stronger and more and more resistant to any kind of outside pressure because you're exerting your own pressure constantly when you're pulling that tape down and pinching it together, you're really creating a lot of resistance uh, towards external forces damaging what's inside of it. So now what we have to do is we have to get the rest of this tape down as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that part here, that part here, that part here, that part here, and I'll show you the finished product. We're just gonna do the same thing, taping and pinching, taping and pinching. So I'm just gonna go like this, tape down, pinch over. I highly advise, by the way, using a three inch piece of tape because this will go a lot faster. If you're doing this with two inch tape, it's gonna to take too long. Get the three inch tape and the three inch tape gun. The link is down below in my description section. I promise you it'll be one of the best purchases you ever, ever make. It's the Uline three inch tape and three inch tape gun. Another technique I wanna show you here is sometimes there is a better side to do the pull down with and the pinching technique compared to the other side. Let me show you what I mean here. So you see this right here. We actually have what's a little tiny, tiny bit of an overhang for the other side. So it would make a lot more sense to basically pull this down over that compared to trying to go on this side and do the pull down onto what is a bigger area right above it. So that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So that's why we're just gonna go like this right here and watch, we're gonna pull this over like this. I'll show you. Just gonna pinch it down like that. And now you could see that closed that seam really, really good there. Nice. All right, so as you can see here, all the seams are taped down right there, taped down right here, taped down right there, and taped down right there. And this thing feels nice and strong and solid. And you can see here, this thing is not going to break. I mean, this thing is like bomb proof at this point. I mean, I could bash it, throw it around, slam it against the camera, throw it against uh, the wall back there. I mean, it doesn't matter. This thing is not going to break. I got nice strong corners on the outside. So it's really, really well protected. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do, I just don't want any of these tape edges uh, you know, coming off and peeling off. So I'm just gonna tape them down real fast. And this is another advantage to having the three inch tape gun. You can do this really, really quick, watch. Okay, just go go like this. There we go, fastest tape gun in the West. Sorry, Clint. Anyway, that's it. All I gotta do is weigh it, put a shipping label on it, and it's all set, all ready to go, and you can be confident that this is going to get to your customer with no damage at all. If you like this video, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, share it with other people, put a comment down below or a question. I love to hear from you on this video or others. 
Make sure you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link to that's down below. And follow me on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. See you at the next video, everyone. Take care.